Hi, Dr. Balani. So today I'm going to review and illustrate how I think and how I approach patients who come to us from all over the world with corneal scars. All right. So this is your eyeball in general. And this is where the cornea is right here. This portion is called the cornea. It's the transparent front window of your eye and actually is responsible for a lot of vision. And that's why this cornea is one what we work when we do LASIK and laser vision surgeries like laser plastique to help the ray of light focus directly to the perfect spot on the retina. Okay, that's the function of the cornea, staying clear and being in refractive focus. If it's not corrected refractively, you're wearing glasses and contacts. Got it? So this can all be corrected. You can see without glasses for that reason. Now, this cornea, if it has a scar on it, let's just draw this in exaggeration. That's your cornea, correct? Let's make it thick this way so we can understand. It actually has six layers, okay? Six layers. And the back, the low, innermost layer has a cells over here called the endothelium, which keep this cornea transparent by keeping it relatively dehydrated. And the top layer also has cells called the epithelium. Now, in between, there are multiple layers. We call it the Bowman's membrane. We have the pre-decimates membrane of Dua. We have the decimates membrane. All these, but let's keep it simple for our discussion today, all right? As a patient with corneal scars, how to approach this. So let's go back and let's draw this again. Now, all the patients who come to us with corneal scars, I like to divide into two categories. As you know me, I like to keep everything very simple. So a corneal scar is an opacity in the cornea, a scar in the cornea. Let's give it a different color. Here you are. And that, of course, is blocking vision, right? Think of the scar being here. The ray of light cannot pass through now. So it's being blocked right here and being scattered and you cannot see. So this scar can happen for many reasons. I call the corneal scar a tombstone, meaning it's the end stage damage to a cornea, which can happen from infections. It can happen from contact lens related infections, which are quite common. It can happen from bad or complications of LASIK, smile, PRK surgery, laser vision surgeries. It can happen that you're born with some dystrophy or genetic disorder. It can happen from trauma. So multiple causes of scars. But so many varieties of scars that I see from patients who come from different, different parts of the world with different issues and complications, I divide them into two simple categories. All right? You, you'll really love this. <laughs> How I think about these things. Very simple. So I divide the corneal scars into two categories. On cornea and in cornea. If the scar has become part of the cornea, meaning it's within the cornea, I call that in cornea, literally as it sounds, in cornea, okay? And if the scar has gone and become above the corneal surface for some reason, I call that on cornea. How simple can that be? On cornea. So if you now look at this again, very simple what I've done. Corneal scars, in my mind, over 40 different kinds of scars. We have actually done a study of our laser plastic on over 15 to 20 different causes of corneal scars. Very simply, I divide them into two categories. Scars that go on top of the cornea and give it what I call a clown suit appearance and bulk. Or scars that become part of the cornea, in cornea or on cornea. In on cornea scenarios, you can even remove these scars with what by uh, corneoplastic based techniques to peel off the scar without damaging the underlying cornea and also correct vision with it. In cornea, I literally refract the patient and proceed with my corneoplastic principles in a technique called laser plastic with the laser. And I shape that cornea despite the scar. And I actually do not care for the scar, if I may use that word. So most people go after the scar. Let's say the scar is here. They go after the scar, they dig after the scar. And while digging, they have actually caused a damaged shape in the cornea, right? The cornea then has lost the shape here because of damage here. Now that shape, remember I started by first telling you the shape of the cornea decides your vision, right? A patient who is nearsighted has a very steep cornea. Think of it as a very curved cornea. So a nearsighted person has a steep cornea. I'm, ex I'm exaggerating these. A uh, farsighted person has a flat cornea. Stigmatism corneas are oval football shaped. Now, LASIK and laser vision surgeries, all these techniques 
flatten the steep cornea by doing laser on top. And by doing that, you can correct nearsightedness. By steepening this cornea with a laser, you can correct farsightedness. And by shaping this football astigmatism into a basketball, you can correct astigmatism. So shape is very important. Based on that principle, I approach every corneal scar on its shape and refractive error. So I do not care for the scar. I go for the shape and the refractive error. Unlike doctors who are doing procedures with the laser where you go after the scar and damage the shape or transplants to replace the whole cornea. Problem with transplant, I'm a transplant surgeon. Problem with the transplants, invasive surgery, stitches, long rehabilitation, donor tissue. And even after that, most people do not see without glasses and contacts. So transplant does have an indication, but in those cases, where it's a last resort. All right. So I encourage doctors all the time to try and fight for these patients and work on the scar visually. Don't just remove. I have so many patients who come to us where the, where the doctors have done a great job of removing the scar, but when removing the scar, the shape became damaged or you have a crater and the shape, bad shape leads to bad irregular astigmatism, bad refractive errors, and these patients need glasses and contacts for sure. Now, not every scar can be made to see without glasses contact because it depends on the depth of the scar. Depends on how much remaining corneal tissue is there, right? So many associated factors. But I like to go whenever I can see them, and I call them visual and structural, remember? All these approaches of mine are visual and structural. Visual, if you can see with glasses, you are a visual case. If you cannot see with glasses, you're a structural case. Structural needs to be built up. So you can treat the corneal scar with a laser in the laser plastic mode for the scar, shape this cornea into a perfect shape so the patient can see in most cases even without glasses and contacts and the scar majority of it comes out as a side effect think of it as a carpenter's plane with the shavings coming out that's the concept so that in rare cases where the patient is very structural what i do is my technique of hand lamellar so the cornea has let's say a very deep scar it's completely thinned out and has very little visual capacity I go ahead and do my unique technique where I lift off that lamella of cornea, not digging off the scar, lift off that scar in my unique way, this layer of cornea with my unique instruments, remove this cornea, throw it away. Your underlying cornea is still yours. We have not entered the eye. And I replace that with a donor lamellar, meaning exactly that same shape layer. So that layer comes on your own cornea. Healing is much faster. And we got rid of the scar and added thickness so I can in the future do laser plastic and make them see without glasses or contacts. These surgeries can also be combined with interocular surgery. I can do premium cataract surgery, put in special lenses in these patients if you're a cataract age. I can put in an ICL, a permanent contact lens in patients who are of an age where they are very nearsighted. We can also correct with laser the astigmatism on this cornea. So there are so many approaches, single or staged with my approach of visual or structural. And all the scars I divide into very simply with all our 3D technologies into in cornea and on cornea. So I hope this helps explain. No corneal scar patient, I want them to straight go to transplant because that disables them, if I may, for their unaided or vision without glasses contacts. But that it can always be a last resort, right? So corneal scars, the minute you have it for some reason, no matter what the cause was, I want doctors to look at them and see the visual capacity. And if there is visual capacity, you can do laser plasty through the scars. Keep a shape that gives the best vision we can, despite the scar. And the scar coming off is a welcome side effect. Right? Should I repeat that? The scar coming off is a welcome side effect should not be the goal. Because patients can actually see with a corrected shape of the cornea, despite the residual scar. There's also an optical trick to this. The more... The scar goes behind in the cornea. If this is your cornea. By doing the laser, if the scar was here because you did laser now on top, what happens is the top layer of the scar is gone and the scar is only remaining behind here. The more posterior it goes in the cornea, the less refractive impact it has. So it becomes less obtrusive to vision despite it being there. So using these tricks and concepts of optics, anatomy, laser technologies, all corneal scar patients can be helped and even techniques of staged or combination surgeries 
in many cases to even see without glasses and contact lenses. So if you have a corneal scar, whether it's from a simple situation like bad conjunctivitis, a contact lens infection, or surgical complications like LASIK, SMILE, PRK, haze, or scar, or trauma, or any, any situation at all, you can be helped. Corneoplastique is the fundamental backbone of a super specialty that I've created to address these conditions elegantly, least interventionally, with most visual promise. All right, for you, Dr. Kalani.